Mr. President, you're world famous as the author of quite a number of short statements in recent months. What made you choose this style in international politics and do you find it effective? I never, uh, there was not an ambition, I never decided to be a, an international figure. I just have wanted to be just a mayor here, but uh, fate that somehow changed the course of my life. Now, foreign policy. Fundamentally, the foreign policy of the Philippines follows the foreign policy of the United States. Why? Well, we were occupied by Spain and made a colony for 400 years. Then when the Spaniards lost the Philippine-American War, one of the concessions that was asked of the Spaniards were to concede the real estate in the Pacific, and that would include Guam. That's why they, they, they have the uh, Spaniard uh, name and the Philippines. Very similar, only in name, because they were occupied also by the Spaniards. But uh, we were ceded to the Americans, and they occupied my country for 50 years. Finally, we had our uh, independence after a bloody revolution and after is several massacres somewhere in Samar, it's in the Visayas, a high-ranking American official was killed. So they massacred the whole town. Ten and above were all put to death. And they got the bell of the church, the bell right, as known as Balinginga. Uh, bell, it stood in their hands and were asking for it even as a sentimental uh, memory for those guys who were massacred. But and these are the things that uh, they just, I said, didn't even bother to apologize. But at the same time, America helped uh, the Philippines gain its independence in 1946 after yes. uh, Japan's occupation got away. So do you think, in a way, you should be grateful to them? Or do you think that the West is using their allies? But if you're an American in front of me, I would say now to you, you want me to thank you for occupying my country? I said, you lived on the fat of the land for 50 years. You gave us our independence. Well, I'm sorry. If the previous presidents were just kowtow and follow what American says, not me. Not me because I know my history and I still have this uh, hurt. Is the, is, was that hurt what made you call President Obama no. what you called him? You must be respectful. Don't just throw away questions and statements. I do not like to be ordered. But you know, even in the matter of uh, uh, the purchase of arms, uh, there was this, uh, we were negotiating until a few days. And one senator stood up and said that uh, the Philippines has uh, it's a record of human rights violation. We will suspend the arms. Go good. I have friends uh, already. Good friends have made, uh, you know, we were uh, at far from a distance with China because of the, uh, well, uh, so many issues. But one is the South China Sea. Well, we were really, so I decided to just visit the ASEAN countries, of which we are a member. And just introduce myself, the new kid in the corner, uh, you know, I'm President Duterte. And then finally, I reached the shores of China, and we had a very good talk. talk. And, uh, you know, President Xi Jinping, he's really a great guy. And uh, little did we, I, I realized that uh, somehow we have missed our chances in our history. We never talked about a military alliance. And uh, I had a talk in that meeting in Laos uh, for the ASEAN. I personally requested to talk to the Prime Minister of Russia, Medvedev. So I told him my problem. And I said, you know, I am not asking for anything. 
we can survive with nothing. But I just want you to know that I want to be closer to you and China because I do not like what is happening to us. You know, every time, and even before, every time the United States criticizes us or reprimands us, they always connect it with a connective sentence that uh, if you do not do this, if, if you do not do that, or if you do this and we do not like it, we will cut the assistance. That every time, several past presidents, do you know that America is not a signatory of the International Criminal Court? And here is a guy threatening me with a uh, prosecution. The <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you, you must be crazy, you know. Then you say extrajudicial killing. What is that word? That is a word of uh, uh, the criminal justice system being adopted by the Human Rights Commission. So, if you're not a member, what's your business in mentioning those words? You cannot even define the term for us because you are not a member and here you are threatening me. And I said, go ahead. It is never a crime to protect a race. It's a self-preservation thing. And you trivialize it with the prosecution and mentioning about the cutting of the assistance that we get. So clearly you're leaning closer to an alliance yes. more towards China and Russia rather than yes. the U.S. As of now, I said uh, we didn't have the opportunity to meet again. Even in Peru, we were there. I don't know who was waiting who, but I just uh, had uh, my time there uh, waiting for the conference to begin. Uh, but I made friends. And, uh, you know, I have noticed that, uh, but uh, I, I might offend him, but uh, tell him no, 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 I have noticed that President Putin, he seldom smiles. He does not, he does not smile too, too much. You know, but when we were together, uh, and uh, in the, in the, in the, the, during the last day where he saw me, he, he went out of his way to shake hands with me. Uh, I said, Sir President, oh, yeah, it's fine. I thought though, that we were seated. So when I went to my place, I found out that my right side was uh, the president of New Papua Guinea, and on my left side was the president. So I greeted him again, uh, President Putin. Uh, oh, yeah, there you are. So he shook hands again. And when the conference ended, as we stood up, I said, uh, I have to go ahead, Mr. President. Then uh, somebody was, I think it was President, uh, my Prime Minister to do, and he tapped me on the shoulder. So I had to talk to, and he was also talking to some other leaders. But again, uh, when I, I, I was uh, ready to go out, I just said to him, Mr. President, I'll go ahead. And then he smiled again and shook my hands. He said, I will wait for you in Korea, uh, in Russia. Yes, of course, but not, not now because uh, I cannot stand cold. I, in all of our talks, uh, I never said that uh, I want this, I want that. I just also told President Putin, that, you know, I just want to be friends, to show to the world that I am not limited to a few countries that I have to interact with the rest of the world because we are a sovereign state. And we have to do business and to have diplomatic relations with everybody. And if there is good to it, then I thank God. Well, since you mentioned business and cooperation, can I just find out what the status on the defense cooperation agreement is between the Philippines and Russia right now? I am not ready for military alliances because we have a treaty that was signed in the 50s. But I am ready to cooperate with my new friends, China and Russia. 
to make this world more peaceful. U.S. decided to cancel the uh, procurement of uh, weapons. And I said, I have a friend who has plenty. As a matter of fact, he's selling it. Buy one, take one. Why don't they do it? But polls in your country show that uh, most of your citizens support an alliance with the U.S. Yes. Still, so how are you planning to... Well, because, because uh, having been a colony for uh, 50 years, it should not surprise you. It's ingrained in the genealogy of the Filipinos. But little by little, I've been telling them, I made this decision because... But the, uh, I think the, the, the Filipinos know the reason in their heart why because I have been very vocal and used the strongest terms when I said we are not uh, a nation uh, of beggars. We will survive without your assistance. Please stop it. If you want to prosecute me, fine. Come up with the evidence. But I will not allow the rapporteur of the UN to face me and ask me questions as if I am a criminal. It would be on TV. Maybe I can invite you again as one of the resource persons. I can invite everybody. And I will tell the rapporteur, do not ask questions on me only. I will ask you also. Do not interfere in, my, uh, in the affairs of my country, internal affairs. We have a serious problem of 4 million drug addicts. I would need, we computed it, I would need about 2 trillion. We will never have that money in our lifetime. And yet I have this problem. And here you are complaining about the deaths of uh, 3,000. You do not even know who were killed, especially the people are, uh, with the, the plastic tape run around the, around the body. If you are a policeman, why would you do that? Why, why waste your time rapping? Why don't you just simply shoot the idiot and just tell them that he fought against me? If I can go back to the U.S. Uh, for the last one, you appear to soften your criticism when it comes to the U.S. after the U.S. presidential elections, after it became clear that Donald Trump would be the next president. Do you think that you could be friends with Donald Trump and maybe your relationship would well, change? There is, uh, I'm not at liberty to make it public. But there are feelers uh, now, uh, even uh, uh, retired generals. And uh, they wrote me a long letter. And the last sentence uh, is that there is no doubt in our minds that we, ca we can be f great friends again and reset the whole thing. That was my slogan, sloganeering when I was campaigning change. I promise no corruption. And it will happen. There will be no corruption in my government. Then I said, I will put an end to drugs because it has compromised the next generation of people, the young ones who are put into drugs. The third is that I will have to stop criminality so that people can come here and visit. In Davao City, you can go anywhere at this hour, but nobody would bother you. And my standard of, uh, I told the police when I became mayor many years ago, I want you to ask your wife and daughter to walk the streets of Davao until morning time. If nothing happens to them, that is the standard that I want for Davao City. And I forced the issue. And I told the criminals again, in the city, and that is why they, they want to be prosecuted. You criminals, drug addict, get out of my city. Do not destroy my country because I will kill you. And to the other guys, I said, do not, you know, destroy because uh, drugs was already flooding. But I, I kept my high profile against drugs. Mm -hmm. And the first to grow exponentially in, a, in the years in between was Davao.
we had a domestic, a local, at one time we hit it at something like nine, which is really very, very high. That is why you have a city that is clean, uh, no criminals, drugs, if at all, because really the boundaries are porous, and you cannot just stop anybody from entering the city because this is not a fascist state. But you have to consider to the citizens. But uh, for as long as I am president, to the very last day, I want the last drug pusher out, and I want the drug lords killed. So I prefer that they fight the police. Well, of course, I said, if they do not want any fight, you just can't say, shoot them right there. What's the point? You, why invite trouble and invite cases? It's only when they fight it out with the police. But you can always shoot them if they fight, put up a violent one, uh, threatening, uh, uh, placing your life in jeopardy. But I never said do it purposely, like a vigilante, tie their box, ask him to kneel down and kill him. That's crazy. You cannot, that's, that's a gangster style. You cannot be a president if you, if you do that. Thank <laughs> you.